Greetings around the world. This is Stube with the CBCRM core team, and I'd like to thank Josh and numerous partners, contributors, and users of CBCRM all over the globe. It is New Year's Eve 2024, and in some places it's already 2025. We're going to present a top 10 list in the spirit of those late night 1990s talk shows of mistakes that people make when they start using CBCRM for the first time. Maybe you're the tech person at a nonprofit and you've been assigned the task of choosing, installing, and setting up a CRM, but you're new to the whole game. Maybe you're a web development shop and you've been ordered to give a CRM attached to your delivery of a website, but it's not your typical area of expertise. Or maybe you've been plopped into a chair and asked to handle, quote, the database without any prior training or taking over for someone who's just quit. Well, you may find in a week or a year that you've made some mistakes along the way, and this video is intended with good humor and a little bit of sarcasm to help illustrate those top 10 mistakes that people make when they use CiviCR app. Without further ado, number 10, assuming that because it is free, that it is easy and simple and requires no training. It's free as in kittens. There's actually a cat in this photo, and there's also a bike in a box. You wouldn't adopt a cat without asking some questions, and you wouldn't assemble a bike without reading the instructions, having some prior experience, or asking for help, or maybe outsourcing it. But for some reason, when it comes to Civi, because it's free, they just assume it's point and click. That doesn't always happen, but I've seen it happen many, many times. Let's use another analogy. There's a little product called mm, Salesforce. Maybe you've heard of it. The feature set and power of Salesforce is very comparable to Civi CRM, but somehow no one assumes that you could use Salesforce without prior training or proper setup. So make sure you read the documentation, which is free and online for Civi CRM, and also offerings like Civi Academy, which help you get a head start, or link up with a partner consultant who can help you. Number nine. Activating features like Civi Mail or sending scheduled reminders, which are located here, without properly setting up the cron, as in chronograph or time-based system that sends those out every hour or every day. It's important to make sure that that is set up on your server before any of those automated features are used. Number eight, unnecessary repetition. If you wanted to set up a new field called format, which might be online versus in person or Mac versus PC, whatever it is, know that you can use that new field across multiple data entities, not just for phone calls, but also for meetings and any other activity type. I see this in descriptions and titles and profiles used with events often, where they keep repeating the date and the year in places like buried deep in the description or the email. And then when they copy, that same event and want to use it next year, clone it, you have to go in and scrub out all the old dates. So avoiding unnecessary repetition is something that is commonplace with not just data. In your garage, if you have boxes of screws and nails and little jars scattered around all the cabinets and shelves, it's going to be really hard to find out how many you have and of what type. Next, number seven. Assigning all staff an admin full permission over your database and then just hoping they don't do anything wrong by accident. Or assigning ad hoc random permissions to different roles like we see here. We have so many, so many permissions for so many different things and we haven't even gotten started with ACLs that you really need to get in there and test and make sure what you're allowing and not allowing for your staff. Number six. Look at this AI generated image. Software will not solve people problems. I know that sounds silly, but I've seen it so many times that's worth saying. If your staff are hating each other, if they're lazy or corrupt, or if they simply lack the capacity to use computers on a basic level or with sympathy even think clearly for whatever reason, I've seen it all. Unfortunately, no software is going to solve those problems. They need to be addressed directly with your staff. Number five, instructing staff to use 
online forms on behalf of other folks. So if my name was Stube and I typed in someone else's other name here and clicked contribute, it would change my name in the contact to theirs. Folks ignore this little link. And so much so that an extension has actually been created called No Overwrite. It prevents users from overwriting their records. So please make sure to train your staff and volunteers not to overwrite their own data as a volunteer or staff person with the data of a donor or event registrant. Number four, using Civi for off-label uses. This is a GRM, a GOAT resource management. It was published by yours truly over 10 years ago as kind of a joke and an April Fool's gag that people sometimes want to use Civi CRM. They think, oh, a database. So can I use that to manage like literature or shipping and receiving or do invoicing, bidding and uh, estimates for a roofing contractor? Or should I use that for highly sensitive national security information, banking, legal information, medical charting? Uh, no, the CRM uh, is for constituent resource management for nonprofits, government organizations, universities, and so on uh, to manage their contact with other folks out there in the world that they want to engage with and keep track of those relationships. I also had someone ask me to import 12,000 addresses without even a name and no interaction with those addresses whatsoever. If you want to send 12,000 postcards to quote current resident at XYZ address, you go right ahead, but that's a mailhouse issue, not a CRM issue. You might just want to start keeping track of the people that respond to the postcard in the CRM. Next, number three, turning on a lot of options, like for instance, multiple language support without reading the fine print. There's so many options down here in system settings. We can't even go through them all right now, but here's a big one. It says it makes changes to your database. Please know what you are doing. Database backup is strongly re recommended, but yet somehow some folks just start clicking aspirationally like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. And then now their database has changed uh, forever and they have to backtrack if they want to undo that. So don't just start clicking things without understanding what you're clicking. That's a good rule of thumb in Civi CRM and all software, really. Next one, number two, switching the label of a field without understanding that it doesn't change the field itself. Here's a problem. This one is labeled Instagram. But when I go here, it says phone. How did that happen? Well, someone changed the word phone to Instagram, thinking that that would actually change which field is being included. You can't just change the label and hope that it's going to change what's in the box. Here's a silly example. If you took a price tag off some crackers and stuck it on some cookies, that wouldn't change what's in the box. In fact, you might even get in trouble. And the same is true of Civi CRM. And according to multiple consultants, partners, and contributors to Civi CRM who've been using Civi, like myself, for a dozen years or more, the absolute number one most common mistake with Civi CRM is setting up a custom field. And then when you do so, enter in all this data, you see one option required and you think, yes, I want it to be required. Well, let's say you're asking, how did you hear about us? Do not make that field required unless you want to force all users to enter a value at any time they add or edit this type of record. That means that you can't even add someone to the database on the back end without selecting an option for how did you hear about us. And you can't even have a form without that question being asked and required on that form. Far better for the required to be not created at the custom data level, but instead to be created at the profile level or on the web form itself so that you can still create someone on the back end without knowing. So if I were to change this, the same problem would occur. Now I literally can't add anyone to my database without telling my database what their dietary restrictions are when I might not even know and it might not even be a person. So we need to set that to no, and then anytime we have an event with a buffet, we're gonna add that question. I sincerely hope this has been helpful. I really want you to succeed with Civi CRM, and I want you to have a great new year. Please take care. See you in the next video.